Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. The 2023 boa breeding season is just around the corner and I'm going to be pairing up animals in about another week and a half or so. Today I want to show you a few of the highlights of the animals that I'm going to be pairing up like this one. I've got lots of exciting pairings in the works for 2023, so be sure to stay tuned. So as I talked about in my last video, I'm going to pair up animals probably in about a week and a half or so, mid-November. And I have lots of pairings in the works. Probably a similar amount of pairings that I had in 2022. I'm going to have a similar amount of variety as I had in 2022. Lots of great true red tails, common boas, a few morph boas, and then other types of locality boas, including lots of dwarf boas. And today's video is just kind of a highlight. This isn't an exhaustive look at all the animals I'm going to be pairing. So if you don't see something that you're hoping I'm going to pair, this is a pretty good chance that I'm going to pair it. Just reach out to me, let me know what you're interested in. But today I thought I'd show you just a few of the highlights of what I'm looking forward to pairing up uh, in the upcoming year. And so first I thought I'd start with this guy. This is an Argentine boa from the Max Pink Bloodline. This guy is about four years old. And I actually tried pairing him up in 2022, but I unfortunately wasn't successful. Not exactly sure why. He really did seem interested in my female. The female is quite a bit older. She's a holdback from 2015. 2015 was actually the last year I produced these guys. And I was a little disappointed that I didn't produce any this year because, you know, one of my favorite boas and first locality boa that I ever produced. But anyway, my fingers crossed for 2023 and I got this guy paired up. He's going to be with his older female. So fingers crossed we should have some really nice Argentine boas born here in 2023. One of the animals that I produced the most consistently since I started doing this, and really the, the bread and butter of my boa breeding, is of course the Suriname red tail. And so 2023, just like my previous decade or so, I'm going to have quite a few pairings of true uh, Suriname red tails this year. And this is actually one of the females that I'm planning on pairing up. She's never been paired before. She's now a little over six years old. And she's one of the original Prometheus bloodline animals born back in 2016. And so this female was a little bit smaller than some of her litter mates. I actually bred two of them this year successfully. And so this particular female, I just gave her an extra year. You can see she's still no giant. I would say she's maybe six feet, but she's got this nice musculature. So this animal is definitely ready to go into breeding trials and hopefully we'll have a really nice litter of Suriname true red tails. This female was one of the actually standouts of that litter, although they were all so beautiful. It's hard to say that uh, any of them weren't a standout, but I really like this female because of her pattern. She's got these connected peak saddles and this long red tail and kind of this overall dirty look like uh, her father Prometheus. Just a really nice animal and I think she should produce some really beautiful babies. I'm also going to have a few other pairings of Surinamans, as I mentioned, from both of my main two bloodlines, the Prometheus bloodline and the Picasso bloodline. So I should have uh, some really nice examples of top-notch Suriname red tails if you're looking to add some to your collection or breeding group. 2022 was the first year that I produced any morph boas and I'm hoping to continue that in 2023. I got two, maybe three morph pairings in mind. And this guy is gonna be part of one of them. This is a Moran jungle boa. This guy actually paired up in 2022 and he successfully sired a litter with another Moran jungle. And so I got some really nice Moran jungle combos, including a super Moran jungle, which is definitely one of the standouts from my production in 2022. And it's one of my holdbacks. This is a 2018 baby, so he's about five years old. Just a really nice example of the morph. Both of these genes are incomplete dominant. Uh, the jungle is pretty famous with the effects of the greater color saturation, cleaner overall color, and the aberrant patterns. But the Moran gives it this really nice pastel color, and the genes work really well together. So I'm planning on pairing this guy up with my Hypo Moran female. And so this should produce all different types of 
Hypo Jungle Moran combos, and possible Super Morans as well. So it'll be interesting to see what we get, but uh, hoping for a variety of different Hypo Jungle and Moran combos, uh, as well as the fabulous Super Morans, which are definitely a standout as far as Morph Boas. And the guy, he, this guy did quite well in 2022, so I'm hoping he can make some really nice babies for us in 2023. Another boa that I started producing relatively recently, but is definitely another standout in the collection, are the long tail or long jacata boas like this one. And this is a female from the Bisset bloodline. She produced my first litter of long jacata in 2021 with another Bisset bloodline male. So she's had the year off this year. I produced uh, some longi from my Vin Russo bloodline. But this girl's ready to go again, and hopefully she'll make another really nice litter. I just love the dark appearance of these animals. I think this female's actually gotten even darker over the last year or so, even though she's been an adult. Just love, especially the face markings. They have these beautiful dark bands on their face and on the top of their head. Just a breathtaking example of a locality boa. And they're also really enjoyable to handle, relatively easy to keep, and you know, quite mellow as far as their personality. So. Really cool, underrated locality boa. Definitely a cult favorite among people that like these animals. And if you don't know about them, I urge you to look into them because uh, really a great boa to work with. So hopefully this girl will produce a nice litter in 2023. Next up, we have a boa that was kind of a sleeper and went under the radar for quite a while, but these guys have just exploded in popularity recently. And this is, of course, the Tarahumara Mountain Dwarf Boa from Northern Mexico. And I've always really liked these guys. And for some reason, they just weren't really that popular for quite a while. And then a few years ago, I think someone decided they look like many Argentine boas. And Argentine boas had, you know, exploded in popularity and anything mini also explodes in popularity. And so it was uh, fate that these guys would just become super popular. And now they're almost impossible to get. So I did have a litter in 2022. It was quite small, unfortunately, and they sold out, you know, lightning fast. This guy is actually the father of that litter. This guy was born here in 2017. Real nice Rio Bravo bloodline Tarahumara boa. And this guy is full size, you know, he's maybe four feet long, but he shows you, you know, the coloration and the pattern of these guys. They're also kind of super mellow. They're not the most active boa, definitely. They kind of hang out more. So if you like a boa to just take out and handle and admire, these guys might be the right boa for you. But also, of course, great for someone that wants a boa that doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So I hope this guy produces more babies this year. He's with a different female who's a little bigger, so hopefully she'll have a slightly larger litter than what I produced in 2022. But honestly, any Tarahumara boas are welcome in my book because these are just such great boas and you know they're so, in such high demand right now. So we'll see what happens with these Tarahumara mountain boas, but uh, hopefully they should be born if they are born sometime early in the summer. It's one of my earlier boas to be born typically at my facility. Another great dwarf boa that I try to produce every year here is the Crawl Key Dwarf Boa. And this guy actually threw a litter in 2022. He, it was actually a second litter with me. This guy is actually about 10 years old. He was produced by Michael Beach. His parents came from Vin Russo or uh, Gus Renfro from the, you know, the uh, Rio Bravo bloodline. So 100% pure uh, Cocker Key ball right here. And this guy is a really good breeder. He actually paired him up with my older female uh, who came right from uh, Gus Renfro. But this guy, um, I have a younger female actually, who was a holdback from 2017, who was produced with a different male. Although I do get a lot of questions about inbreeding and you know, is it okay to pair up related boa siblings or you know, mother to son, father to daughter. You know, and I, of course I did a, a video on this in the past and it's kind of a complicated question. But in general, it's probably not as bad as you might think, especially with a island boa like these called key boas. These guys are from a small island in the wild and there's very limited gene pool. So they're likely already very inbred. 
And so if there were any deleterious genes in the population, they would have been weeded out or the population would have gone extinct. So you don't need to feel as bad about breeding closely related uh, island boas together. In fact, it's pretty much impossible since all of the animals in captivity are basically, in most cases, just descended from you know, one or two bloodlines. And the same, same is true with like tar humar mountain boas and actually a lot of the other locality boas. But anyway, this guy is gonna be paired up in 2023 with a 2017 holdback female. It'll be her first litter. Uh, she's about the same size. These guys are about four, four and a half feet long, a little bit bigger than the tar humara. But you know, another really great dwarf boa, if you want a, the full boa constrictor experience in a more manageable pint size package. And these guys also, I would expect probably midsummer, you know, around July-ish, if I do have a litter of them to be born. Here's another true red tail that I'm going to be pairing up in a few weeks. This is a North Brazil true red tail. And if you've been following the channel, you may have noticed I have not produced any of these yet. I've tried in the, for the last two years to produce North Brazilians, but much to my chagrin, it hasn't been successful. I've only used my other pair, which are from basically boas, but this female is now ready to breed. She's a, I think a 2016 baby. Uh, this is from Vin Russo. This is a um, Lemke bloodline. And so haven't tried pairing her up yet, but we'll have to see what happens. I don't know what happened with my other pairings. In fact, this year I tried both my males, my basically Boas male and my Vin Russo male with this with my other female, and it didn't work. They didn't look like they were interested. But we'll see if the males like this female a little bit better. I'm hoping so because these North Brazilians are super hard to find and really, really popular. So it'd be great to produce a litter of them. Overall, what characterizes them is they look a little bit more wild than the Guiana and the Suriname kind of more background markings and splotches and their saddles are a little more asymmetrical and jagged looking and also their background color is a little more grayish yellow not quite as reddish pink as the Surinams or Guianas. They're just a really cool example of a locality specific red tail boa from northern Brazil although in honesty they're not really that locality specific because no one knows exactly where in northern Brazil they came from. This isn't the Belém uh, northern Brazil. This is just the generic northern Brazilian true red tail. But we'll see what happens. Would like to produce these because these are again a true red tail that I have not yet successfully bred. Now for another first time morph pairing. It's going to involve this guy. This is a moon glow which as you probably know is a hypo um, cow albino and anherthristic. And so this guy is now almost three years old. He's probably gonna be my youngest bow I've ever put into breeding trials. And if you've been following the channel, I typically don't breed any of my locality boa males until they're at least about four years old. But I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of the morph breeders claim that you can breed morph males at a really young age. Some people even claim as young as a year and a half and three feet in length. So I think it'll be fine to give this guy a go since he's now almost three years old, I'd say he's probably about five feet long. And I always uh, see these pictures of people breeding the morph boas and they've got this huge female that looks like she's eight, nine, 10 feet long. And then this little tiny male that looks like a little worm trying to mate with her, it's kind of comical. So this guy won't be, you know, it won't be quite the same difference with this guy and his mate, but he'll probably be a little bit smaller. And I'm planning on putting him in with my um, call Junglo female. She is, I think she's a 2018 if I remember correctly, but I haven't bred her either. So with any luck, we'll get the, you know, different call jungle combos, you know, albinos, jungle albinos, sunglows, etc. They will all be het for anorithristic because this will be the dad. And you know, it's pretty basic cross as far as morph breedings, nothing new or fancy, but I really like these basic morph genes. And what I think what's kind of great about them is that the price is already bottomed out. It's not like you're gonna pay 10 grand for a boa, and then two years later, the baby is gonna be worth like a grand. These guys are only gonna go up in price. And actually that's what I've seen has been happening with moonglows. 
I got this guy uh, about two years ago. I think he was 750 at the time. Now a typical price for a moon glow is nearly double that, about 1200 or so, 12 to 1400. And they're really hard to find as well. So I'm lucky to got, have gotten this guy when I did. Um, I, I like the moon glow. I mean, it's not pure white, which some people might say, well, it's not like a leucistic, you know, princess diamond, it's not pure white. But I really like this really pale yellow coloration, kind of like the moon. And the markings kind of stand out. This guy's getting a little bit uh, tense. Hopefully he's not going to bite. And this guy actually right now, he looks almost orangish. I think because he's going into shed, he's kind of got this really pale orange tone to him. A really cool looking boa. Not for everyone. I know most of you guys don't like Morse very much, but I like having some in the collection because they add a lot of variety and a lot of enjoyment, you know, that I, things I don't get from my local Kali boa. So hopefully we'll get a real nice litter from this guy in 2023. So I'm going to show you a couple more boas here that uh, give you an idea of my breeding for 2023. And this is a little bit different. So rather than showing the breeders, I thought I would show a hold back from the same pairing. So this is a 2019 Pearl Island boa, a Saboge boa that I held back. So she's now about three years old, a little over three years old. I'm actually gonna pair up the same pairing, the male and the female that produced this animal and uh, should be a good pairing. And so the mother is from Rich Isle. She's a really big Saboge, probably about seven feet long or so. Father from Vin Russo. Girl looks a little bit chunky. She had a medium rat about three days ago. I just started feeding them medium rats. They were on small rats. But really happy with this female. I actually held back a pair from my first Saboge litter in 2019. And they'll be ready to breed in a couple of years. But uh, definitely a different locality boa. Not widely appreciated or like not one of the more popular boas, but definitely one that I think deserves more popularity. These guys are kind of the most diverse, or divergent, I should say, of locality boas. They're really long and slender. They're a lot more active than most boas. They have this really unusual shaped head, and they have this really beautiful patternless golden body color. So hopefully I'll have a litter in 2023. Uh, I actually had a litter in 2022 from the father of this animal and my other adult female. And those babies are all off to their new homes. They have relatively small litters. I think my litter this year was only like five or six babies. And in the past, I've gotten anywhere from like five to like eight or nine babies. It's just part of uh, this particular form of boa. But definitely a cool one for someone looking for something a little bit different to add to their locality boa collection, the Pearl Island or Saboge boa. One more boa to share with you today. And this is another true red tail. This is a Nikitos Peruvian true red tail. So this guy is a farm bred male that I got back in 2017. And he was either born in 2017 or 2016. They said he was a baby, but he seemed like he had some pretty decent size to him. So I think he probably was born in 2016. But at the time I had this, I acquired a trio, which was supposed to be two females and a male, but it turned out to be two males and a female. And then strangely, both of the supposed females were males and the one supposed male was a female. So not quite sure how that happened. At the time I was a little bummed out because I thought I was getting two females, but I decided to keep both the males because I really like these animals. This guy you can see has these really cool peaked saddles, kind of blocky peaked saddles and then the golden yellow color. He's definitely a bruiser as well. And I'm really glad that I kept them because, you know, as I've bred boas year after year, I've really come to the appreciation of how much you need extra males. You know, sometimes the males just get tired and need a year off. Sometimes they're just not interested and you gotta put two males in there to try to stimulate interest. And so this guy actually didn't breed last year. I paired up the, my female from the uh, Kidos farm bred uh, batch that I got with the other male and I, there was no babies. I didn't really see much activity, so no interest. So my plan for this year is to pair that same Akitos female with both of the males. And so I'll probably kind of swap them in and out. I'll probably also try both at the same time, you know, see if multiple males can stimulate, you know, the breeding. But should be, hopefully I'll get some 
babies this year. If you've been following the channel, you know Peruvians are one of the animals that I've had difficulty producing consistently. I think a lot of people have had difficulty producing these guys. I ended up with just four babies uh, for 2022. None from these Aquitos animals, they were from my Procalpa animals. So hopefully in 2023 you will have some nice Aquitos boas. And so these are all farm bred animals, um, likely from unrelated bloodlines. They're likely unrelated to any in captivity in the US, although it's kind of hard to say for sure. They all look different. My three Aquitos animals have quite a bit different in terms of their patterns. So we should, if we get both of the males contributing, you know, their genetic material to the female, we should get some really nice animals in the litter if we do have a litter. And I'm just kind of keeping him at arm's length because he's still a little wild and these guys will snap out at me every once in a while. They're not really tame. And I don't want to get bitten by this guy in the face, that's for sure. So there you have it. That was a look at some of the highlights of my breeders for 2023. And these guys will go together. I'll start pairing them up around the week before Thanksgiving or so. But it should be a pretty exciting year ahead and hope to have as good or if not a better year than I had this year. Hope you enjoyed the video and it was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please shoot me a line or make it right in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.